I was looking over my collection of PCS games before deciding to write this script, and it dawned on me that there are a lot of cool games on the PCS, especially for Atari fans. Back when I purchased my console, I had to decide between the Atari VCS and a Nintendo Switch. At the time, thanks to one of the sales Atari runs on the VCS about three to four times a year, the price was pretty comparable to the Switch, and if I listened to friends and family, I would have wound up with the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, I probably should have listened. The journey with the VCS has been one of momentous highs and disastrous lows. During the setup, I had to do more than my fair share of research just to get the console up and running. Seriously, the thing was near useless for the first 24 hours that I owned it. But once I conquered the obstacle, I was excitedly playing the Atari 50th Collection, Asteroids Recharged, and a few others. But it wasn't long before I couldn't partake in buying the new cool stuff that was being released on the console. The dreaded zip code glitch that made purchasing new titles from the VCS store impossible had hit me. So all I could do was play the few games I managed to grab prior to the issue and hope that Atari came up with an answer. And for a long time, they didn't. But then they did. But then a week later I was hit by the glitch again. But then they fixed it again. And then a day later it came back. And so this was life with the VCS for a few months. It was ridiculous. It was dumb. It was just so, well, Atari. But for me at least, the zip code glitch has been a thing of the past for the last two months. I've had ample time to fall in love with the console, and I have. Looking over my game library, I finally realized I was happy with what I was seeing. I just purchased Quamp 2, an incredible new take on Pong that you need to experience if you haven't tried yet. I had enough disposable money left over to pick up Dragon's Havoc, an incredible Atari 7800 homebrew from Reventuli and Atari Age that encourages shmup fanatics to value accuracy over their spray and pray tendencies. A totally different direction than most developers take, a one that I'm glad is now accessible to more casual fans. Before that, I had grabbed a few other Atari 7800 homebrew games to support the developers of my favorite retro system. EXO is an incredible game for any console, but especially when you consider that it was created for the Atari 7800. Developer Muddy Funster created a special kind of adventure that deserves to be well known. And thanks to the VCS, it's more known now than ever before. I also grabbed Artie, which is another Muddy Funster joint. It's a love letter to Hero, and in a lot of ways, it's everything an improved version of that game should be, with very smart nods to gaming's history and comparable games. The last homebrew I grabbed was Harpy's Curse, the first Metroidvania to hit the 7800. If you've always been curious about the Metroidvania style of games, but don't have tons of time to invest into the lengthier ones, then this game from Raventuli is going to be a fantastic introduction to the genre. Yes, the 7800 homebrew community is well represented on the Atari VCS, and maybe that's why this rush of love for the console is hitting me this evening. But it's probably also the fact that this baby feels like a real, new Atari video game computer system for the current era. I've been enjoying Food Fight, Culinary Combat with my podcast co-host Vinny whenever we have time to play. And as a matter of fact, we just held a tournament and played over a live stream with fans. It was an incredible time. Everybody had a lot of fun, and we even gave away some cool prizes to the winners. Oh, by the way, congratulations to first place winner, Yorkie TV, second place winner, Obsidian Contraption, and third place, Piazza Pixel. I hope you guys enjoy your prizes and the trophies that Vinny had made. But anyway, the experience of playing and setting up the tournament was very Atari. You might think that describing it that way is lame and a cop-out, but I beg to differ. The experience was fun, friendly, and accessible, all the while being charmingly flawed. There really was only two issues, one in setting everything up without the aid of usernames, and another where everybody in the match froze at one time. And we could only laugh it off, saying, well, that's Atari. Fun, accessible games and the occasional issues. What's more Atari than that? But moving on, the Recharge series has been the most inviting part of the VCS experience for me. Returning Atari fans should also find the Recharge games a nice entry point for the system. Berserk, Caverns of Mars, Missile Command, Asteroids, Yars, Breakout, Centipede, and so much more are all represented by the Recharge series. They feel familiar, sometimes even a bit too much, but also the good ones change things up in a very fun, creative, and modern way. Yars Recharge has all the elements of the original, while adding in elements of turrets from tower defense type games and projectiles all over the screen, like those you might find in bullet hell shooters. 
Gravatar uses the incredibly challenging gravity and propulsion gameplay of the original, while employing modern objectives and enemies. Even Berserk turned things into more of a twin-stick shooter, where you keep chains going to maximize your score. The Recharge series might not be the meat and potatoes of the VCS library, but it's definitely an appetizing snack to get you started. And before we get into those meat and potatoes of the VCS library, I want to shout out the third-party developers for filling out the library on the VCS. Atari has given us almost everything we love about the company, but they can't do everything. This is where the independent developers have filled things out with adventure games, puzzlers, retro-style platformers, and even first-person shooters. While Madness Beverage is very flawed, it was great having a game like it available on the console for when the mood strikes. Companies like Curass Entertainment and JD Video Games have tried to bring three-dimensional adventures in the form of End's Reach and early 2000s arcade games in the form of Super Star Shooter 16. Pixel Games has brought one of the best-feeling modern takes on classic arcade games in the form of Donut Dodo. They managed to mimic the feeling of something like Donkey Kong or Dig Dug perfectly. There is so much more that I haven't even tried to this point, but independent and third-party publishers are a great part of the VCS experience, and one that I think gets overlooked way too often. And, well, that's a crime. And a crime that, well, unfortunately, I'm guilty of too. But let's move on to my favorite part of the VCS experience to this point, and that's Atari's main, quote-unquote, big-budget games. My first experience with this came with the Atari 50th collection, and I was floored by what they were able to turn this collection of ROMs into. It's more than just another anniversary collection. It was a real-to-life documentary. A video game that doubles as a historical record. Something that I had seen tried a time or two before, but nobody went to the lengths of dedication that developer Digital Eclipse and Atari did, and getting to experience it on the VCS made it all the more special for me. Next I grabbed Atari Mania, and while it was definitely more flawed than the near perfection that was the Atari 50th, it was still a pretty fun game. And maybe I liked the idea more than the execution, but using the original Atari properties in 2600 style games in a micro game setting was really smart. And depending on how familiar you are with the games, and how quickly you can pick up on things, this game should be a very memorable experience. At the very least, you'll get some dopamine hits from all of the nostalgia. Beyond that, there was the new Haunted House, which was a smart update to the classic original game of the same name. And while wholly different, it still maintains a sort of pick up and play quality that just feels so right to me. Then there's Neo Sprint, which is flawed but admirable that the developers just refuse to quit on it. I personally have enjoyed it from the start, but the various improvements and changes the developers have made increases the fun, even if it's only marginally. And I already touched on Food Fight Culinary Combat. It's a great game and a fun multiplayer experience, but the fact that nobody is usually online just really upsets me. I know there are thousands of people on the VCS. I have seen it on the high score tables on various recharge games, but I guess making online gameplay a massive element of a game meant for an older crowd probably wasn't the best way to go. And there's always the bots to practice against, and honestly it's a fun experience that way too. So yes, it hit me tonight that I love my VCS. I didn't always feel this way. There was times I regretted purchasing it. There was times that I said I hated the VCS out loud. But Atari has persevered with the console, and done what they could to make it a worthwhile purchase. I wish that the fixes to the zip code glitch could have came quicker, and that the initial experience was a more enjoyable one. But the console has grown on me. For the past two months I have had nothing but fun with it. My friends list is growing, the community is pretty active on the forums and discord, and more and more games continue to hit the store on a regular basis. It feels like an Atari experience, made for fans through and through. And for somebody that runs a YouTube channel called the Atari Network, that's something I wasn't sure I'd ever get to experience again. But I sure am glad that it's an experience I was able to have at least one more time. So if you're like I was all those months ago, asking people if you should get a VCS or a Switch, then as cliche as it is, I just say follow your heart. I know the smart choice was the Switch. I probably would have had more fun from the start, and more access to more games. But getting to this point with my VCS was an experience worth having. It's another memory with an Atari-based console for me to reminisce on. It's the bad times and the good times that make these things memorable. I've made friends looking for answers to my issues. We had a blast setting up the VCS Food Fight Tournament in the most backwards way I can think of. 
and I've had fun experiencing stuff I would have passed up if I had the options of, say, the Switch available to me. I might have ignored the excellent Quamp 2, the flawed genius of Food Fight Culinary Combat, the persistent love letter that is Neo Sprint, and so many other games just like them. My name is the 7800 Pro Gamer, and I have a confession to make. I love my Atari VCS, and I don't regret buying mine at all. I hope you guys enjoyed my thoughts on these last couple months of VCS ownership. If you want more videos just like this one, then why not browse my previous videos? I do reviews every Sunday and featured videos just like this one every Thursday. And if you'd like to be notified when I release future stuff, then why not subscribe? It helps the channel out a ton, and so does leaving a like on this video if you enjoyed it. We also do the Atari Network podcast every other Friday with my co-host Vinny Vineyard of Big and Funky Productions. We discuss everything new and cool with Atari, and we even look at the past and discuss topics important to the community. So make sure you join us at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific. Also, please consider joining my Patreon. The following people already have, and I can't thank them enough. I appreciate it so much. Their support helps the channel to obtain better equipment, acquire items to cover, and keep things growing. It's $5 a month and you get access to members-only live streams and videos every month. You also get exclusive access to high-score challenges on the Discord server. So thanks to my Patreons, and feel free to get a hold of me on the Atari Network Discord server if you'd like. Okay guys, I'm the 7800 Pro System Gamer, proud VCS owner here at the Atari Network, and I'd like to thank you all for watching my video. And remember, stay classy Atarians. Before that, I had grabbed a few other 7800 home, bo <clears throat> home boobs again.